This is the new Infinix Zero Book 13 and this is a laptop that takes the whole price to performance ratio and it just blows it away. Trust me, when I show you the specs of this laptop and then the price, you'll be like, you gotta be kidding me. How is this even possible? You know what, let me just show you the specs first off. This top-end Infinix Zero Book 13 variant we have is powered by the 13th gen Intel Core i9 13900H series processor, which is super powerful. 14 cores, 20 threads, 5.4 gigahertz on turbo, the iris XE graphics. This is almost flagship grade. Add to that, this comes with 32 GB LPDDR5X RAM that has a speed of 5200 megahertz and it has a 1 TB Gen 4 SSD. So these specs make this seem like a laptop that would be priced, you know, over 1 lakh rupees. Well, this is actually the price. I mean, this is the introductory launch price, but still, this is crazy for a laptop with these specs. I mean, this is a work laptop, and in this price range, if I take some popular laptops, this is what they come with. The Dell laptop has a 13th gen Core i7 U series processor. The HP laptop has a Core i5 P series processor. The VivoBook S15 OLED is good. It has an OLED screen, and it has a Core i5 H series processor, but it's still no match to the 3900H on the new ZeroBook. The Zero Book 13 absolutely kills the competition. It even has more RAM, which is also, by the way, faster, and it has more storage while costing less. This is incredible, and if you don't know, the new Zero Book 13 is the successor to the Zero Book Ultra, which we made a video on. But what's interesting is the Zero Book Ultra with the Core i9, 1 TB storage, 32 GB RAM, cost rupees 84,990 last time, but this time the variant with similar specs costs less. So how cool is that? Plus 12 Gen Core i9 to 13 Gen Core i9 is a solid upgrade. Just check out the Geekbench scores: 2K in single core, 14K in multi core. The Cinnamon score is also very good, and the PC Mark score shows that this laptop will be great in day to day tasks. Lastly, this is the Crystal Disk Mark score. To show the fast SSD, which is in line with Gen 4 speeds. Look, benchmarks apart, what's actually commendable is that this laptop absolutely kills it in day-to-day -day usage, and that's hardly a surprise. There is no lag whatsoever when using multiple apps, multiple Chrome tabs, 4K videos, and everything else, and the ZeroBook 13's performance is just outstanding, even for intensive use cases. See, just like last gen, the ZeroBook has an overboost switch, which you can just flick on from the side and extract maximum performance out of this laptop. See, there are three different power modes in this laptop with different power levels. There's economy mode, there's balanced and then there's overboost. The overboost mode brings you the most power, obviously, but it also makes an impact on the battery. But I like that you can just turn it on for, you know, intensive tasks or even games. For example, on overboost mode, we played some GTA 5 and the FPS was around 70, very steady with almost no stutter or lag. There was some screen tearing, but that's just normal since it's just the CPU handling this. FPS and CSGO rattles around more in the area of 70 to 100, and this causes some stuttering, but still the gameplay is quite smooth and enjoyable. Now, when playing games or doing intensive tasks while the overboost mode is on, the fans do turn on and they get pretty loud but they do a good job of cooling the laptop. So the laptop has dual fans, a heat pipe, and since we are here, you can see the additional SSD slot and the soldered RAM. But coming back to the thermals, there are these outlet vents here, a large intake vent at the bottom, and all of this makes sure the cooling is excellent. Now the area near the hinge gets warm, but other than that, you feel no temperature changes on the surface of the laptop. See, the high-end performance of this laptop is obviously the big USB, but let's talk about the rest of the laptop. So this is a 15.6 inch laptop, so it is a fairly big laptop, and you get this IPS screen here that's actually good for starters. 400 nits of brightness here is more than enough for everyday and multimedia use. The 100% sRGB coverage and the glossy finish of the display make it apt for work. And even though the display is 1080p, there's good level of clarity in all types of use cases, be it browsing websites, watching high definition content on Netflix. And Infinix has focused on the multimedia experience because this has a four speaker setup. Two here on the front, two on the bottom, and these do get decently loud. So here's how they sound. So this is good, but yeah, I could have expected more from quad speakers. Other than loudness, the sound is kind of decent-ish, a little flat, but that's mostly usual for laptop speakers. When it comes to design and build, Infinix has retained the same design as the last gen ZeroBook Ultra. It has the same glowing Zero logo on the back along with this pattern, the same red ambient light in the overboost mode. The lid has this indentation and it opens up with one hand and when you open it up, the MacBook-like look is still there, especially in the keyboard and trackpad, which are mostly nice to use. So the typing experience is nice, but the keyboard is a bit cramped to accommodate the speakers on the front. So I did make some errors with the small keycaps, but the keys are smooth and and there's decent trap. You also see the MacBook resemblance in the caps lock key, which glows white. The trackpad is also smooth and has a fairly good clicking experience. Now, the battery also remains the same as last gen at 70 watt hour, and with the kind of specs it has, I wasn't expecting the best battery life, and I was right. 
I mean, balanced mode, I got a battery life of around four, four and a half hours, which is a bit low for a work laptop, but that's the compromise you'll have to make for high-end performance. Anyway, the webcam is a 1080p camera and there's dual mics and the quality is quite nice for classes and meetings. There are also some really cool features. This lets you change the background, this beautifies your face, and this basically follows you around kind of like center stage. There are also all the ports, a USB-C port that supports PD charging as well as display port, a power in port for the 90 watt adapter, a USB-A port, and another USB-C port. The right has the overboost switch, a USB-A port, a 3.5mm headphone jack, and an SD card reader. On the connectivity front, there's Wi-Fi 6C and Bluetooth 5.2. Look, overall, it's absolutely clear that the ZeroBook 13 is aimed at people who prioritize powerful performance. I mean, the ZeroBook 13 remains the only Core i9 laptop in the sub-85K price range. Add to that the speedy RAM and storage, a very good display for a work laptop, and you have a laptop that has some solid advantages over the competition. The only downside, if you ask me, is the i9 chip being power-hungry because a lot of people want good battery life in their work laptop. Anyway, I want to know from you guys, 13th Gen Core i9 at 82,000 rupees. What do you guys think? Comment down below.